Welcome to The Shift Show with Adriana Bucci. Join me every week to learn all about narcissistic abuse recovery, healing from physical and emotional pain after the abuse, and everything else to do with toxic people and how they affect your physical, emotional, and mental health. And no, you are not the crazy one. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Let's get right to it. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Shift Show. I know I've taken a bit of a hiatus, but I have a bunch of amazing interviews lined up for the next several weeks, and I will continue doing the Dear Adriana column as well, so stay tuned each Wednesday for a new episode of The Shift Show. In today's episode, I am interviewing my amazing client, Nadir. You may remember her. She's been on my podcast in the past and she shared her story a couple of years ago and she is back sharing more of her healing journey and just the amazing transformation she has made in the past three years now. And she broke the cycle in her 60s and she's literally proof that it is never, ever too late to start your healing journey. So I will stop rambling and I will let you listen to the episode and the whole interview. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Shift Show. I am super excited for this episode. I have a very special guest. Her name is Nadir and she has been one of my clients for the past three years. That rhymed. I'm a poet and I don't even know it. (laughs) And uh, I'm super excited to have her on the podcast again. You may have heard her on the podcast, I think two-ish or three-ish years ago, sharing her story. And she's here again today to share, you know, even more of her story and her recovery journey And I'm just super, super excited to have her here. So welcome, Nadir. So excited to have you back on the podcast. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here um, at this point in my life. (laughs) Three years later, it's, it's it's been great. It really has. Hard, tough, but great. Totally, totally. And I'm so, you know, just like, proud of you for even being brave enough to share your story on a public forum like this because no no one really is brave to share their stories I think you're probably like my spokesperson <laughs> at this point oh, thank you because you've That's been cool. so vocal about your story and your healing journey mm-hmm. and just having the courage to even share even a little bit of it is so freaking amazing so thank you so much for being here And we're going to dive into a lot today. But before we dive in, if you want to kind of introduce yourself to the audience for anyone who may not have heard the first episode yet, or just to give people a refresher, um, I will pass the mic off to you. Thank you. Yep. Um, It's been three years, but it's also been decades of emotional abuse by my parents Um, my father passed in 2011 and the narcissism just got worse. I thought that my mother would reach out and be more somebody, you know, nicer so that she knows we're going to take care of her when she's older or just through life. But no, the abuse just continued like into from a child into adulthood that the realization um of how cruel uh she has been is and will be that's that's huge and i have realized that through through doing your healing programs from the very first one the group all the way through to the most um current um I'm sorry. I've been through so many. <laughs> what was the most current? There was Bulletproof. freedom Bulletproof. and Bulletproof. Bulletproof being the one of the, not that it was so tough for me. It be, it it was more detailed, more in depth, more, a lot of hard questions. And the hard questions, when I say hard questions, not that they're hard to, to answer. They're hard to 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 actually work on because the program is based around um, bringing up your emotions, having those trapped emotions of guilt, fear, and shame 
dealt with, worked through. And that was, that entailed a lot of journaling. Mm -hmm. Uh, Journaling is one of the best tools (laughs) um, that I've come across when I was young. I used to have a diary that I wrote um, all my pains and everything while my mother confiscated and used those pains to even make it more painful. So I never wrote again until um, Adriana's programs showed me that it's okay to write, but destroy it. Don't share it. Don't keep it. And that to me was a, a bringing down a wall. It really was. It was very hard uh, because <clears throat> just writing thought after thought and and letting that those thoughts just take over to a point where it, like you, you always say put pen to paper and see where it takes you I wholeheartedly believe in that um, it's one of the toughest things I've ever done but it saved me on so many levels um, I cried through a lot of the journaling um, and, but now it's just it, an emotional friend <clears throat> to, to help me guide it to that. It's okay. Um, a lot of the tools, uh, that, um, I've been able to, I've got notes here, <laughs> a lot of the tools and, and boundaries, boundaries, huge. I didn't even know what a boundary was. No idea because I was. I was brought up to accept everyone's abuse. It wasn't just emotional. There was also physical and there was also other abuse that I don't want to name. Um, But those are things that I always thought that that I didn't deserve better, put it that way. Because nobody told me I deserved better. So boundaries being very, very important in this program. I mean, I've listened and been to many therapists over the year. By the way, I'm 62. Um, and and none of them answered or helped me see where I'm at, what I've been through, mm-hmm. and what I'm capable of. And that the reality is the narcissist doesn't care. They really don't. I might be jumping around a little bit. But they really, really don't care. I want to tell you uh, the last time, <laughs> okay, for, for a while now, since I've, I'm have i comfortable with the low to no contact, okay, so uh, the you. last, yes, the last time that I saw my mother was uh, beginning of March. Mm-hmm. I get a phone call from my sister-in-law saying my mom's in the ER. Her BP is very high, dangerously high. Yes. It's very concerning. Yes, it's scary. So we went out, spent uh, the whole night there. Um, But but getting there, when I finally got hold of her doctor, her doctor didn't even know she had a third person in her life, me. Wow. Had no idea I even existed. But you see, that's that's the invalidation Mm -hmm. that I've lived with my whole life, even though as soon as I walked into the hospital, the first thing out of her mouth was, why are you here? Go home. Mm-hmm. But I thought, okay, well, are you going to take the bus home or a cab? What do you want to do here? Mm-hmm. And it was my husband and I, we spent the whole night and we took the time to take care of her. Mm-hmm. Found her, her own room, instead of being in surrounded area, gave her nice warm blankets, kept her comfortable. Uh, I think that the only time she was quiet was when she finally the doctor gave her something to sleep. Uh, but it was jab after jab after jab. It was that's yep. what they do. Absolutely. And then the next and the next time was on Easter weekend. We thought that was a, a few weeks after. Um, we thought, let's have her over, just her, my daughter, my daughter's spouse, and my husband. Nice. From the moment she walked into the house to the moment she left, it was jab after j- everything. Everything bothered her. Everything was wrong, even down to saying the poinsettia. Oh, I have my poinsettia is alive, but hers died. Oh, because somebody bought me the cheap one. Well, guess who bought her the poinsettia? I thought, what the? Anything I had to, to journal that you. one out. Yeah. 
absolutely <laughs> and this is proof <laughs> this I know. These stories that you just shared about you know the situation in the mm-hmm. hospital easter etc is proof that narcissists do not get better with age and so nadir you shared that you're wow. 62 which is freaking amazing and you are proof that it is literally never ever ever too late to start your healing journey and you know you have the rest of your life ahead of you to be able to have a calm nervous system and navigate the rest of your life with as much peace as possible. And so how old is your narcissistic mother at this point? She is 85. Wow. And so this is, I asked you this just to kind of really, because I get questions every day about do narcissistic mothers get better with age? Should I take care of my narcissistic mother when she's like really old and, you know, in the hospital and all that kind of stuff? And is she going to change when she gets sick? And I can absolutely attest to no, they don't get better because my narcissistic mother passed away with all of her bullshit with her. She took all of her grudges and nonsense to her grave. But right here, we have a situation where your narcissistic mother is 84 years old. She is still alive. She was in the emergency room in the hospital overnight, dangerously high blood pressure. You were taking care of her, which you didn't have to do, but out of the goodness of your heart, because you are a good person, you did so. And she still continued to narc. So. And the the thing is, I'm not guessing why anymore. Good. That that was my internal voice, okay? Perfect. That was my inner critic. Um, it, that was so loud saying it was me. It was me. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I don't do that anymore. Mine is now mine. Mm-hmm. My voice, my reality. And these are the words that I use often. I am amazing. I got this. I am safe. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't have any fear, guilt, or shame about my relationships with her or any narcissist other narcissistic toxic people in my life because I do use I do use my boundaries now no means no when you say no to a normal person which was really a shocker for me too because I was so scared to say no in thinking that there would be negative uh results that they would hate me that they would shame me that they would try no normal people except no, mm-hmm. which I, I never Wild. knew. Nobody. Yeah. And I got that from doing your program. Oh, I'm you. serious. I had no freaking idea that just blew my mind, Absolutely. blew my mind. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is really part of the conditioning from narcissistic abuse and not only just narcissistic abuse, but narcissistic abuse by a parent, because they really condition you to believe oh, yeah. that if you say no, bad things are going to happen. And it's true because if you say no to a narcissist, oh my God, like watch out, right? But that's a really great way to recognize whether you're dealing with a healthy, normal person or a narcissist, because the reality is a normal, healthy person is going to accept no as an answer. Maybe they'll have a follow-up question or two, or, you know, require some clarification, but they're not going to turn it into a whole cyclone of bullshit like a narcissist would and so it's really about unlearning the people pleasing and you know just that fear right because people pleasing is really rooted in fear and shame and guilt and you know the consequences of saying no and you're causing this person harm and all that kind of stuff but once you actually Mm -hmm. do the work and process those emotions which I am so proud of you Nadir for doing and it's not easy work I've been there too I still process my emotions like healing is a lifestyle change it is a lifetime journey and it's not like one of those things where you know you do it for a few months and then you're done and everything is great and you're this perfectly healed unicorn no it's really you're healing from a lifetime of abuse and in your case Nadir this was six decades of abuse six decades of conditioning to not say no to be a people pleaser to fear the other person's reaction and fear the consequences. And here you are saying no to people and recognizing that a normal person is going to accept your no. And, you know, when you say no to a narcissist, you can anticipate 
what their reaction is going to be and, you know, what they're going to say to you. And you're able to recognize it as the manipulation tactic that it is rather than personalizing it like how you used to. And that's freaking awesome. It sure is. <laughs> I tell I tell you, um, I, I barely pay any attention to my mother anymore because she's the worst of the lot, of course. She's extremely immature. Um, and she, even though she, she comes across as very intelligent, it, it's when, when she gets caught up in her own word salad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, uh, um, first of all, she, she will never believe anybody else mm -hmm. her way or no way. That's the brain's capacity <laughs> and her lack of empathy. Yep. None at all. Um, cause told her that his uncle had passed away and I never even mentioned it because she didn't even let me know her own sister, pa my aunt who yeah. passed away. Oh, because she couldn't, you know, she couldn't be bothered. She didn't want to be bothered. Too inconvenient I don't know. To let you know. But quite convenient was that the neighbor came over and noticed her crying and all of a sudden she's crying. To a, a, a stranger. And that's the other side, the other the other part of their personality, the um, the attention, the audience, they don't let them trick you because mm -hmm. they do that to everybody. They manipulate, they love an audience. All of your friends and other family members will think that they are the perfect person and the problem must be you because mm -hmm. you can't take criticism you can't uh be respectful to to them where they are cruel and ja and saying saying things that are not okay i don't understand society's acceptance of abuse and if we we say anything back it's our fault see that's how I was raised. Yep. I don't accept that anymore. Amazing. I'm not accepting. It's not okay to accept that abuse from a toxic person. And don't, and somebody who says, well, well, how long has this been going on? Or, or, um, you must have done something wrong first. I was born. Mm -hmm. I was raised. Mm -hmm. I was put in a, in the fear, shame, guilt yep. life. And exactly. that's my fault. Exactly. That's my fault. No, mm -hmm. it's not, not any, you know, just, just realizing that um, creates a sense of, I'm not going back there. Amazing. I will not, I refuse to take that, accept that from anyone that's anymore. Um, but I still am. I still am very much a people pleaser. I am a perfectionist because I like to be in control of my surroundings. Uh, yes, letting go is hard for me. You know, I like everything in neat in its place. Things are done at a certain time. I'm a hard worker. Yes, I was raised to be that way. But now I'm looking at it as I used to be a rebel. <laughs> I really did. I tried the rebel thing mm -hmm. because that, that's the other thing. Being a rebel as a teenager, it got me attention because I, I lived in a world of if I did anything wrong, silent treatment, mm -hmm. which would go on for days, yeah. sometimes months yeah. of me not me being invisible unless I did everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. And that that's been so ingrained and so conditioned into me that I would literally have to be living as a hermit to get over that. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And here's mm -hmm. the thing. It's, you know, when you're conditioned to be a people pleaser and a perfectionist and all that, it's, it's not that your goal is to stop being a people pleaser and like never do anything perfectly again and like purposely screw things up because that means you're healing. Absolutely not. The way I see it is that whoever is a people pleaser, which is, you know, if you're listening to this, it's all of us. Let's be realistic. All, all people pleasers. I'm still a people yeah. pleaser, <laughs> right? But it's, you're a recovering people pleaser. 
And it's all about kind of redirecting your energy on who you're people pleasing, because now you're people pleasing, not the narcissist, because you know better, right? And the way I see it for myself personally is like, yeah, I'm still a people pleaser, but it doesn't bother me because I will go out of my way to people please my clients who are working with me and they deserve it. And it's not that I'm people pleasing them as a way to get them to not be mad at me or anything like that. It's that I want to, and it's out of, you know, you're here, you've chosen to do that work for yourself and I'm going to go above and beyond. Whereas with a narcissist or someone who, you know, has narcissistic traits and I can sense that they're trying to get me to people please them, I'm not going to do it because I can tell that there's like an ulterior motive. And same deal with perfectionism in your case as well, where, you know, you, everything has its place and, you know, it is what it is. It's not like that is something that is impeding your life at this point, right? It's not like you're cleaning out a cabinet because there's consequences. It's more so, you know, this is just a habit of mine and it's not a, not a bad habit to have, really. It's not ruining your life. Everything's organized and that's, that's great. I need to... I need to develop that, that skill at some point. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it's really like redirecting the energy of, of the traits that were conditioned into you and kind of like, I guess you could say even like using them as a superpower, if that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Amazing. I wrote that down. I'm going to journal that out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect. Seriously, because because that really makes sense because that is my personality and I don't want to lose that side of me because it it really helps me to see the beauty of what I'm working on. Like, okay, um being in Canada, finally it's spring. Mm -hmm. Finally I can get my gardens going. 2 years back I actually, we, we, my husband and I, we actually started a little vegetable garden. We are empty nesters. I have two grandchildren in Alberta. My other daughter lives in Guelph, uh, and what, an hour and a half away. Um, but we're doing, we're doing this for us. I've never had a vegetable garden because I was told I don't, I would never be able to do that right mm -hmm. from my mother. Uh, so finally I took, we took that chance and boy, do I really enjoy my vegetable garden. Amazing. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that, getting outside and, and, and putzing in my, in my gardens. I really enjoy my gardens. I am done with this winter. I know it's been mild, but it's just been wet yeah. and damp yep. and yucky. Yep. Ontario weather. It's just a Ontario weather. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so let's kind of go back to, I guess, almost the beginning. When did you kind of realize that your mother was a narcissist? Like what kind of, like, I know you were in therapy and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> wasn't really helpful. What kind of was the catalyst to kind of get you to recognize that like, wait a minute, I'm not the problem. My mother is. Yeah. Um, being with a therapist who literally dumped me, uh, this therapist, uh, in, uh, told me to look up narcissist. And so I did on my own. I thought I'm going to do a little research about this. What is this word? I, I think thought the therapist was useful for something. <laughs> I thought that the word narcissist meant, you know, like a psychopath, a murderer, it's like the mm -hmm. worst of the worst and mm -hmm. some kind of mental illness that needs pills. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. Um, so I did the checklist, whatever it was, 20 questions. And I thought, uh, yep, uh, yep, yep. Oh my God. Yep. And whoa, yep. And yep. And yep. Okay. Now where do I go from here? Well, my sister-in-law was over and she introduced me to you. Awesome. And I thought, okay, let me see what uh, Adriana has to offer. It, it took me a while because I had to listen to your podcast over and over again. They really resonated because you were dealing with the the toxic mother um, abuse from emotional abuse from a from childhood, um, and then I. Then I saw you had a program. I, I have to do this. I have to try this. I have to trust. Mm -hmm. And for the rest is history from there. Um, it 
I, I, <laughs> because I needed answers and to realize that I'm not the crazy one here. Yeah. And just hearing you say those words and believing those words helped me to believe those words and just the exercises going through every single exercise. I took my time. Some of it was really hard and scary Uh huh. Um, from childhood letters uh, from my childhood trauma letters to each years of of writing and uh and and reflection through every part of the program <laughs> whoops <laughs> really helped the the reality and the truth and to not to, I, I'm not able to unsee um, how much it really can twist uh, a child and and never stop. I thought, here I am, I'm 21 years old, I'm getting married, now she's going to start treating me like an adult. Mm -hmm. Nope. It never happened. Mm -hmm. Even to this day. Yep. <laughs> You're still not an adult in her eyes. I'm never going to be an adult in her eyes. But it's not just the adult where you go. I say to my own daughters, I love you. You'll always be my baby girl. Always. And I mean that from the heart. Mm -hmm. I mean that I respect, love, and see you as a fine young adult with their fine young spouses. And my two beautiful grandbabies who are five and two and a half who have amazing boundaries, by the way, through doing, through, with your program, I realized that I broke the mold yeah. of, of this rottenness. Absolutely. Before even realizing that you did break Before that. I, Before I even realized, but my daughter, she has her and Curtis or husband and they're getting married in June we're so excited we're going to the wedding um they've smashed the mold Amazing. my my granddaughter has no qualms about telling daddy and mommy how upset she is Good. and she cries and they're they're so and she knows no means no Good. and that's her boundary and okay. <laughs> I thought well okay I did pretty good you did, you did amazing. I did pretty good you did yeah. freaking amazing Mm -hmm. you no, know, like you had something in you that knew that the way you were brought up, something was not right with that. And you no. before even realizing what the problem was, right? Because this was this was only like 2021 when you recognized that your mother was a narcissist. You you had your kids well before then, right? And you broke that mold. You broke that cycle before even knowing that there was a cycle to break. And that has carried on into the future generations with your grandchildren. And that's freaking phenomenal. It is. It's phenomenal because they're going to be brought up not being fearful of the world and not being fearful of what other people think. Yeah. And, and I hope that continues to work for them. And I'm pretty sure it will because they're a pretty open family, which is pretty, it's really amazing, amazing. to watch. That's awesome. yeah. I'm so glad you get to witness that because that, you know, even yes. before you did the inner work, that is still a product of you being such an awesome person and doing <laughs> such a great job raising your children. So I'm super, super proud of you. Thank you. And now my next question that I have, because I know people listening to this have heard you mention that it's hard to do the inner work. And I agree. I could not agree more. It is one of the most difficult things that you'll ever do, but what are the results of having taken the time to dig deep within you, answer those hard questions and process those emotions as difficult as it is? Has it, A, has it been worth it? And B, mm -hmm. 
what was the outcome of doing it that made it worth it? Um, it was worth worth everything. It was worth the time to work on those emotions, to work on the inner critic, huge. That was a very difficult exercise to do uh, too, because the inner critic is the one that you look in the mirror and you say, you beat yourself up, mm-hmm. that you're not worth it, that you're, you're, you're dumb, you're stupid, you don't know how to do anything right when you make one mistake. One mistake, that's all it takes for a child to be conditioned the rest of their life to hide mistakes. I've lived my whole life hiding everything, hiding everything, everything in its place, a place for everything. Hide the evidence. Mm -hmm. Never show you're upset. When reading the room, Mm -hmm. uh, reading the room, as soon as I feel uncomfortable, I just shut down. Mm-hmm. that's why I don't go out <laughs> I'd rather just stay at home and enjoy myself enjoy my life not be not be I don't want to and it's tough because I'm I've not only had to relearn and unlearn past conditioning habits I don't know what else to call them but I'm really protecting myself And I also learned that it's okay to protect yourself. That is part of your boundary. Exactly. And if you're not comfortable going somewhere or having someone to your house, um, the last get together, summer get together, my mother was not invited. Perfect. And uh, there were a lot of people, my family, who were very happy about that. (laughs) I bet. (laughs) I was the one to make the first move. Yep. And uh, the other move that I made was my sister had her barbecue get together and my mother was there and decided not to go because yes, I have the tools of the gray rock, the yellow rock of the side of, uh, of setting the boundaries of walking away. Mm-hmm. of repeating myself 12 times when mm-hmm. she's jabbing, jabbing, jabbing about, you know, getting something her way Mm -hmm. when you're just interrupting everything just to create havoc yep (laughs) Um, on it sometimes you just don't want to do that so that's why I didn't go you you know what and you know what's interesting the others Mm -hmm. she's now picked now she's trying to look for new supply exactly exactly they're always that's the thing narcissists do not change they will just change their targets and if you're not there taking the brunt of it someone else will be because you know, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do. And so you did the right thing by not going because a, if you didn't really want to go to begin with, and B, you knew it was going to be a shit show because your mother was going to be there. Why Mm. waste that time? And I always tell people time is the only resource we're never going to get back. So you're better off spending your time in a better way than spending it with someone who you know, is on a mission to destroy you. Absolutely. Your intent, if you do not go through this process, is going to be that you you feel that you have to hide. You feel that you don't know how to control this person. Oh, my God, if I'm nice, if I get them a drink, if I get them some food, if I sweet talk and just listen to their word salad, everything's going to go good. No. No, they're just going to turn around and manipulate, twist your words around, make you look like the bad guy. And as soon as you blow up or say something, they lose their minds and play the victim. Exactly. And everybody else feels sorry for them. She's done that to me numerous times too. And I thought, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? Of course, it's my fault. Of course. That's conditioning. Mm -hmm. But now you know it's not your fault and you didn't do anything It's not wrong. my fault. You I were didn't just do reacting. anything wrong. Yeah. You were literally just reacting like any normal human being with emotions would react to the abuse that they were going through. And, yeah. you know, your mother with her narrative, that ended up being the issue. Your reactions, she caused, she stirred the pot, 
caused you to have the reactions because narcissists want you to have an emotional reaction because when you're in that emotional state, you're easier to control and there they can better control the narrative. And so you had the reactions. She ended up mind mental gymnastics her way into making herself the victim and getting supply from everybody else, feeling sorry for her for how terrible you are. And now you can see right through that shit. That's why I refuse to, she's not coming to my house. That, not, 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 I don't, I don't think so. Not for a long time right now. Uh, that would be a never. Uh, only, only because I saw it, but I knew better. Exactly. Exactly. She, she proved me wrong again. Yep. <laughs> I tried. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Any, any little ounce of false hope that she'll be normal it's just like you're better off chucking it in the garbage because it's just she's gonna keep being who she is yeah and my my siblings I think my brother he is the golden child he's been he he's been kind of a target because I remember my sister-in-law saying that every time they get in the car with her she they they're going to get into an accident the way she carries on and her and my my brother are like at each other and Angie's in the back with with her two sons who are young adults oh that's the other thing too she will veer off and talk in Portuguese because nobody understands mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so that's her that other way yeah, they would just start talking in Italian so no one else would understand. So nobody oh. else would understand. And you're sitting there going, I, I don't even want to respond to that. But then she'll look at it. So say like, what, you didn't understand me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to understand you. Mm -hmm. So I've started just saying, um, that's not what I said. Mm -hmm. I'm just walking away. I just walk away now. Everybody knows I just walk away now. Okay. I walked away during that hospital when we were in the hospital. Every chance she started yattering about something, I would just walk away. Perfect. Oh, and then she'd, of course, play it up with an audience because there were oh, a couple yeah. of other people in the room. It's just, it's just so, so manipulative. Yeah. It really is, but that's the way she is. That's the way she will always be. That's the way the narcissist mind works. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, and I don't, and now I, because of the, the tools that I have learned through this process, uh, work related, any other people that I meet, I have learned to not give in and walk away also and be able to say no. And uh, say, I don't understand that. Can you explain that further? And they get all tripped up on themselves, of course, <laughs> because they were just trying to get supply. They weren't yep. trying to explain anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Amazing. I'm so proud of you. And, you know, this is just proof that, like, once you know one narcissist, you know them all because they all do the same shit. And the same tools are going to still work, whether it's your mother or a coworker or an acquaintance or another relative mm -hmm. or whoever it is, like you'll, you can tell what this person's agenda is and you can make that empowered choice to not participate in the circus. And see, and recognizing the cycle of abuse yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. The love bomb devalue mm -hmm. discard is all like, mm -hmm. once you know what to look out for, it's yeah. so recognizable. It's very recognizable. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> I just walk into it and walk away, I think. Uh, no, it's not going to work with me today. Go love bomb somebody else. Exactly. Thank you very much. Amazing. I'm yeah. so proud of you, Nadir. You've come such a long way. And, you know, before we kind of end this episode, if you have any words of wisdom that you would want to share with, Whoever is listening to this episode, whoever is still listening to this episode, who has obviously resonated with everything, if they are still here, what would you want to say to them? Uh, to try the program, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, there, the, every program that you've developed has been a variation 
with with uh, the same tactics. Um, uh, Bulletproof was absolutely the longest, most most grueling <laughs> of them all. Uh, just do it for yourself. I'm I'm very serious. Do it for yourself. Get to the end. Yeah, it's hard uh, to to get to that end. But I I really feel coming just having epiphanies as as going through the program will resonate so much because every other person on the internet that you listen to, you're either going to think one of two things. Oh my God, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I am not going to look at the universe and, and, uh, uh, um, manifest, manifest them to be a, perfect spouse, brother, sister, parent, co-worker, employer, because that doesn't, that's not the reality of their, the, their makeup, mm -hmm. their, their brain capacity. Uh, they don't have empathy. They fake empathy. Just, just watch. Pay attention to how you feel from the beginning of them speaking to the end of them speaking. A lot of times that cycle of abuse, it, it happens in yeah. like a matter of sentences. Oh, yeah. They start out really good. Love them. And then the poinsettia was a cheap plant that somebody bought me. Mm -hmm. value. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yep. all in one sentence. And I think exactly. it's typical. Exactly. Typical. Totally. And if you could say something to Nadir from three years ago before mm -hmm. she started her healing journey, what would you say? That I wish I'd done this decades ago. I wish uh, that there was good therapists out there there are but the the one all the ones that I encountered had they had no idea because I didn't look for the right person I didn't look for the right help uh, and realistically and with therapists it's kind of like you get who you get a lot of the time you get right you and get. you don't I, know yeah. if they have any lived experience and you know there are great therapists out there so I'm not bashing on therapists but no not sometimes they really mm. miss the mark and you can go through therapist after therapist after therapist and still feel just as stuck if not more stuck than before you started and sometimes you know it just takes having a coach or a coach and a therapist, right? Because some people will do my coaching program and do therapy at the same time. And they find that's really helpful. Um, for mm -hmm. some people, just the coaching is more than enough because they get that validation and, you know, they don't feel like they're crazy anymore. But sometimes just, you know, having someone who has been there and gets it can make a world of difference. And, you know, especially when you've got a therapist who unfortunately is gaslighting you and making you feel like crap about yourself and, Sadly, that's what happened. Exactly, that, right? That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, the last therapist, I was with her for almost two years, and I, it, she made me feel like I had to be really careful, more, 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 uh, more gentle with my mother. It, it was, of course, it was. She made me feel like it was my fault yeah, and that if yeah. anything were to happen to her, she had to note it in case something were to happen to her. Like, and it was just a, just a scenario of this little sailboat. She asked me to pick a boat and put it on the river and it, it went away. This, this, this was horrible. And, and I said, wait a minute, and I'm watching it tip and I'm watching her drown. Like, this is how I feel about this person who I, I am right now telling you I hate mm -hmm. no she noted it and said well that's not the way to act wow. uh, if anything were to happen I I need to have this noted and I thought okay I cannot 
live my experience with this person. Yeah. I would never hurt anyone, exactly. period, because they're not worth me going to jail for. Are you exactly. fucking kidding me? Exactly. Now, I knew that then, and I knew that. I know that now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you get hit by a car, I will not be upset. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. that's on you. But you're not going to drive the car. <laughs> but I'm not going to drive the car. Exactly. And I'm sorry if people think that's cruel. But when you're angry, that's the other thing. Anger, I have learned, is now an emotion that is okay. Exactly. Yeah, after after the Easter thing, I was yeah, I was mad. I journaled, I punched walls, I I was furious because I was hoping for a better outcome. And it didn't happen. And she was twisting everything around to make me look like, oh, I'm i I'm just way too sensitive. I, I can't, you know. She can't take any words or any any words of advice or anything. Mm -hmm. All said in Portuguese, just wanted others to see my, but my others know mm -hmm. the reality of it. So they, they know. Totally. They know. Totally. Yeah. And yeah, just to the go off on the story about your therapist, basically, you know, doing mm. this meditation exercise with you where you're observing your mother on this boat going down the river and you're so angry with her because of the decades, literal decades of abuse that you have every right to be angry about and just visualizing it tipping over. And then your therapist saying she's noting that down just in case something happens to your mother as if like you're going to go murder her or something crazy like that. Like that is... I thought, wow. <laughs> wow. You know, like that is just absolute bullshit. And that, you know... That's, that's manipulative. Terrible, yeah. And that's enabling. gaslighting. Exactly. That's gaslighting. That's enabling. Mm. And, you mm -hmm. know, therapy is supposed to be a safe space where you talk about your feelings. If you came up with like an actual murder plan saying on this date, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to hide the body. This is who I'm going to get to help me. Then, yeah, sure. Note it down. <laughs> but this was literally. I wouldn't just share it with a stranger. That's fair enough. Sure. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, I feel like that would be worth noting down and whatever she was noting it down and rather than just having this thought of like oh yeah this visualization the boat's tipping over and she's drowning and I I'm not upset about it you know that, I'm not and she's basically trying to like trigger you with shame and fear and yes. guilt for even thinking which, that which is narcissistic yeah. which worked which yeah. worked by the way because I I think I went home and I got I got loaded I drank because I didn't know how to deal with it. So I needed to shut myself down. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought nobody's going to believe this until you. Yeah, You're I the first that. person I ever told and you Aww. believed me. Of course, of course. I've heard so was, many horror stories and experienced therapist horror stories as well, where, you know, I've just been invalidated and told that like, oh, that's my mother. I have to love her no matter what. And I can't say mm. anything bad about her. So not surprised at all that you know that happened it's fucking bullshit that that happened but you know uh, yeah like sometimes you really just need that person who has that lived experience to validate things for you yeah absolutely y yeah that's why I'm trying to I really am I'm working on and I notice more and more of your followers they really thank you a lot which is so nice and it's so real and you've earned it. You just, or you work hard. Um, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, out of pureness of heart, your kindness, your grace, your patience, your gentleness with, with us makes us, I, I feel like you've let me become the adult that I've earned to be. Okay. Aww. Thank you so it's much true. for the kind words. <laughs> and I'm also going to invite you to give yourself credit for that as well, because you did the work, right? Like, this is how I approach coaching, that you can lead the horse to the water, you can provide cups, you can fill the cup with the water. So in my version, I can provide the program, I can walk you through the modules. So that's the cups and the water, but it's up to you 
to do the workbooks and do the work and show up for yourself and reach out for support when you need it. Or, you know, when you have questions that need clarifying and, you know, when you don't know what to do with one particular tool or whatever, and you did that Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. you have to thank yourself for that. And even thanking yourself for taking that leap to even doing the first program to begin with, right? Because that takes a lot of courage, even reaching out for support after having all these terrible experiences in the past, reaching out for support. And, you know, it's, that was all you, right? Your gut told you, this is probably a good idea. Something inside you loved you enough that knew that you were worth doing this, even if you couldn't articulate it at the time. And I am so proud of you. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't articulate it because I didn't know. All I knew I was looking for some relief. Um, and some validation and some truth. And I was, I am sick and tired of being that people pleaser for others, but not people pleasing for me. Mm-hmm. The, now that's, I changed that around. So I'm the people pleaser, the perfectionist, the, um, the, and it's okay to be empathic and I'm doing it more for me. Um, knowing that I'm that that it's okay mm-hmm. absolutely yeah so proud of you way to go Nadir you've come such <laughs> a long way and your story is going to really resonate with so many people I hope and so. oh absolutely a hundred percent one hundred percent and yeah like thank you so much for having the courage to share your story again. Thank you so much for coming on the (laughs) podcast again. I will definitely have you back on in the future if you want to. Um, And, Mm -hmm. you know, always love chatting with you and hearing about your updates and your wins and just, you know, seeing you thrive after going through literally decades and decades of abuse, like over half a century of abuse. And look at this, you have come out the other side. And that's, fucking amazing and I'm so proud of you and I'm sure everybody yeah. listening is super proud of you as well yeah it feels it feels really it feels uh, empowering um because it was so overdue and I wanted to make sure to the uh, just just as a side note that I was doing right by my daughters because having been brought up that way, I was so afraid that I would do something terrible <laughs> for them. I made sure when I saw them suffering through depression, my oldest suffered with anxiety attacks, I would be up holding her Aww. throughout as long as she needed me to be there. Anything. because I never got that growing up mm-hmm. um and I wanted to make sure that it was okay and I defending her I would if anything bullies whatever it, mm-hmm. if there was a bully I was so happy that she was not afraid to tell me where I was afraid because of course if I was being bullied that's because I took it mm-hmm. it's my fault mm-hmm. and that's as the reality of her reality exactly. I was just a child I did not choose this exactly um and none of us choose to be treated terribly by another human being exactly. and oh man I know walking away is is hard there are different situations for every every person um I just hope that this works for you if anything to give you some kind of some kind of inner belief that it's not you that you're you're okay and it's not acceptable absolutely Thank you so much for sharing the dear <laughs> and your daughters are so lucky to have had you throughout their lives raising you like just the fact that you were there for them is so amazing during their dark times like 
you know, it's one of those things where those of us who didn't have that upbringing, it's like, I wonder what that's like. That sounds really cool, you know? So they are yeah. so lucky to have had you and you absolutely broke that cycle. And thank you so much for, you know, sharing your wisdom and sharing your hope for other people listening to this that, yeah. you know, you can do this too. It's hard, but absolutely. it's worth it and you can totally do it. It's so worth it. And I really appreciate everything that you do uh, to uh, to reach us, to reach our inner core. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> no, it's true. See, see, how, see how hard it is for us to take a compliment? Yep. <laughs> it's really hard. I oh, yeah. don't take compliments at all. I just, I, you know why? Because I always wait for the other shoe to fall. I think, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, you're complimenting me, but tomorrow I'm going to do something and it'll piss you off. And I was right all along. Mm -hmm. that's the way the brain that's the way our brains yeah. were conditioned totally I'm starting to say thank you more and stopping right there and walking away and letting it be okay yeah that was mm -hmm. uh, that's hard <laughs> yeah it really is yeah. it really is yeah. and on that note thank you for the kind okay. words <laughs> I so appreciate All it right. And thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure I will have you back on this podcast in the future. Thank great. you again. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye. Good night, all. All the best.